Jr., look at his numbers. He was awesome in the first 10 minutes of this one. Nothing since. An extended break on the bench. We'll see if he can regroup. And Hogard right now is a one-man wrecking crew. And look at Danger out 35 feet from the rim. That means the middle's open, but Hawkins is there. Walker drives on him and flips it up and in. How good and, and, and much improved, Brandon, has Tyson Walker and A.J. Hogarth been. Like last year, they were so inconsistent. That's why Michigan State was inconsistent throughout the entire year until the very end. This time, Epps for three. And a rebound to Hauser. Back and forth we go. We've had nine ties, four lead changes. Michigan State on a seven-game win streak. Illinois riding a mini two-game win streak. Walker back up top. The senior from 17 feet doesn't get the bounce. Five minutes, what a game. Darren Shannon Jr. should be fresh right now. We know how aggressive he is. I know he's been out a long time, but give him a touch. Instead, it's Hawkins knocking down the triple. Just a second eight field goal. He has not had a good night offensively, but that's the leadership that I'm talking about. When you're an upperclassman, you got to have a short memory. Your team needs you. Hogard can't answer. Tom Izzo looked at him and said, I'm not sure about that shot. And Illinois was happy to watch A.J. Hogard launch one instead of torture them down in the paint. Michigan State is 0 of 4 from three point land tonight. Epps blow by no. What a battle for the board. Danger. Hauser, nowhere to go, got pushed. Dane Danger, 18 points, and Hawkins with a big three, Illinois up five, Casey. Got Coleman Hawkins coming up big. The best players come up big when they're needed most. Right here, deep bomb on a night where he has really struggled. And then watch Danger. Watch this ball fake here. Ball fake, laid in the basket, impressive. We got a street fight going on here in Champaign. We've got your back, Road Warriors, because we know you're picking up the pace. Steering life at 10 and 2, you're hitting the road, and we're helping you get there with confidence. So skip the counter without missing a beat. Choose any car in the aisle and be the boss of you. Go national. Go like a pro. Six days of the week, when you steal a fry from your friend, they can say, hey, I paid for those. But on Free Fries Friday, they can't. Free Fries Friday at McDonald's. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm home. Honey? Are you watching the bear without me? Yes, chef. Hulu. I'll remember that chapter of my life forever. We laughed. We cried. We protected that progressive home and auto bundle day and night. We were all of us dazzling. Like knights sworn to protect our kingdom. We knew it wouldn't last forever, but that's what made it special. I know we'll be back tomorrow, right? Yeah, but it'll never be today again. Just get on the phone. Are we still on for three? I'm on phone. When your team needs more space to work and eat. Carl, is that mackerel? No, it's a trout. <laughs> it matters where you stay. Fish tacos? Carl. Hilton for the stay. Meet the bed. Super strong, stable, and incredibly quiet. Designed for any and all bedtime activities. 
Check in at Thuma.co. Dudes, get the new only pant by Fabletics. Awesome. Want one pair of pants that does everything like magic? Breathable cooling tech. Always stretch. Secure phone box. I an only pant app. Water repellent. It's our biggest sale of the year. Get the only pant for $19 at Fabletics.com. This bakery needs new equipment fast to keep up with demand. So they're going to On Deck, the online lender that makes it easy to choose your loan and if approved, get funds as soon as the same day. Your loan is On Deck. Jared Lucas ranks first on Nevada and second in the Mountain West in scoring per game. The Oregon State transfer has led the Wolfpack to second place in the conference. They have Utah State next, but first, back to Brandon and Casey in Champaign. All right, Rob, we are set for a great finish. Illinois up five with 342 left faces. The game danger has been a problem. The danger zone, they call it here in Champaign. And there's a lot of good big guys in the Big Ten Conference, and danger wants to be on that list with Edie and Dickinson and Amarui. And how about the quick spin baseline? He's got that move down pat and... You know, Brad Underwood calls him a dancing bear. Brandon, I'm a fan of the National Geographic channel. I've yet to see a bear score 18 points on 7 of 10 shooting against this Michigan State defense. Thoroughly impressed. Native of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. Had offers from Illinois, Minnesota, Iowa out of high school. Went to Baylor. Things didn't work out. He's come to Illinois. Things are working out pretty well. Hogard. Yes, Hogard has had some big second half buckets. He's not scared of this moment at all. And how about the double screen right there? They basically sandwiched AJ Hogard's defensive player had nowhere to go. Last two meetings in this building between these two programs been one point each. We're on track for something similar. The all-time series is 64-62. Michigan State leads it. It has been such a great battle over the years. Danger to the right hand. He's got 20. He's got both hands. He can go right. He can go left. Hogard called for the screen. Crab wanted to travel. Still plenty of time here. Hogard again rejected, but a foul. Hawkins cannot believe it. He knows how to get fouled. Brandon, you got to give A.J. Hogard credit. This crowd doesn't like it, and I understand why. Because A.J. Hogard, when he drives, he is going to dive into your chest. Watch Coleman Hawkins here. Oh, that, that's not a very good call there. On, on the second look. There was a body bump, so I get it. But when A.J. Hogard drives, he's the one that creates all that contact. That's frustrating as a defensive player, but smart on his part. Hogard averages 12. If he hits this, he'll have 20. And he's got 20. And we are back to a one-possession game. Those are the meetings I referenced, and tonight, four lead changes, eight ties. Is this a mismatch here? Meyer against Akins. And a foul on Akins. Double bonus for Illinois the rest of the way. And I ask if it's a mismatch, because I'm not clear, I, I, I'm not totally sure. Jaden Akins is the best perimeter defensive player that Michigan State has. And I know he's not as tall as Matthew Meyer, but he's certainly as strong. And Meyer's not super comfortable in the post. He's more of a perimeter big. First free throw of the night for Meyer, and it rolls down. It's been so interesting this game, with Michigan State not hitting a three. Terrence Shannon... Has it scored since early in the first half? His storylines on both sides, bottom line, great game. I mean, incredible uh, the way that Illinois has bounced back, but also the fact that Michigan State is in this game on the road. You mentioned no threes. I mean, it's 2023, right? Could it stop right here? <laughs> well, no, he missed the three. Offensive rebound, though. Walker, extra pass to Hauser. Still no threes for the Spartans. And 
the Michigan State bench thought for sure that one was going in. It felt like every single Spartan touched the ball on that possession. The basketball gods usually reward you with a three-point make in that in that opportunity, but no. Down to a minute 40. Meyer left that short. Go Danger grabs the board. And uh, Brad Underwood didn't like it, but he like that. Hawkins on the weak side. Tom Izzo takes the timeout with his team down seven. Brad Underwood was not thrilled at all with the shot, but how about the effort? Watch Danger. He's been awesome. It's like there's been two of them out here in the second half. But here, take your time. Instead, he rushes it. But look at Coleman Hawkins. He knows his role. Man, a big three several minutes ago from Hawkins. That big offensive rebound. They have been able to keep the Michigan State Spartans at arm's length. And meanwhile, Tom Izzo's running out of time. Only 89 seconds left in this one. We talked about Hawkins when he had zero points, was 0 6 from the floor. Nine points all in the second half and eight rebounds. Illinois trying to get their third consecutive win after an 0 3 start to Big Ten play. And after this, a trip to Minnesota. Minnesota got their very first Big Ten win on the road last night against Ohio State. A little controversial last play there. But Minnesota pulls it out, and Ohio State has now lost three games in a row. you got to stay on the balls of your feet here in the Big Ten Conference. Yes, you do. rest on your laurels. Deafening in here, 15,000, another sellout at the State Farm Center. Where does Tom Izzo go here? Is it Hogard time? Absolutely. A.J. Hogard, let him make a decision. He doesn't have to shoot it every time, but he's going to be the decision maker. Well, here's Hauser getting good position, leaning in. Got it back and scored it. Really important bucket, but you have to get a stop here. They're running out of time. They're, they're not going to foul, obviously. There's still time on the clock, too much time on the clock, but this is an important possession for both teams. Inside of a minute. Everybody in this building, by the way, standing. Epps wants to go to work. And he went to work and laid it in. Spartans need it. Hogard cannot provide it. And now they've got a foul. Got the foul here to prolong the game. There is the foul with 33 seconds left. They can smell it now. Jaden Epps, the freshman, coming through. And watch Sissoko. He stays connected to Danger because of Danger's ability to offset the rebound and score on him. And because of that, Epps is allowed the space necessary to get to the basket. Double figures in five straight for Epps, seven tonight. Illinois has gotten contributions from a lot of different guys. There's Shannon's first point since midway through the first half. Now he has 16. It's got to be good news for Brad Underwood and the staff, though, right? Your, your leading scorer doesn't score for three-fourths of this game until just now, and they're able to extend their lead. Michigan State needs some threes, and they haven't hit one all night. That one is blocked by who else? Matthew Meyer. Tom Izzo calls the dogs off. And Michigan State's seven-game win streak is snapped at the hands of the Illinois Fighting Illini. Illinois' offense in the second half came alive. 54% the Illini shot in that second half. And defensively, they smothered the Spartans and made it a frustrating evening. And Illinois is back in title contention in the Big Ten.
They started 0-3 in league play since then. Wins against Wisconsin, against Nebraska, and now Michigan State to get back to 500. Over the final 11 minutes, Illinois outscored Michigan State 30 to 14. Partner, a lot of fun tonight. I had a blast, man. Let's do it again. What an atmosphere. For Casey Jacobson and our entire crew, I'm Brandon Gordon signing off from Champaign, Illinois. The final Galat I went at 75 to 66. Rob Stone, take it away. All right, guys, thank you. Two down, one to go. Taylor Folk is one of the Mountain West top three-point shooters. And he's from a Utah State team that leads the nation in three-point shooting. Aggies in Reno coming up next. Welcome inside our College Hoop studio. Rob Stone, Jim Jackson, Donnie Marshall back here with you. We're hanging with you until tip in that one. The Spartan loss snapped a seven-game winning streak, dropped them out of a first-place tie with Purdue in the Big Ten. Illinois, they improved to 9 and one at home. Donnie, what impressed you about the Illini uh, win? The adjustments. You go mm -hmm. in at halftime, you're down, you, you know you're at home, but I'm sure Coach Underwood said, listen, this is not the basketball we can play and expect to win this game against Michigan State. They came out, scored 42 points in that second half. Terrence Shannon Jr., 15 points in the first half, only two in the second half, but Dane Danger mm -hmm. really was the difference inside. I thought his, his ability to finish with both hands really confused anyone who was guarding him from Michigan State. I, I, I also love when you see coaches continue to go to guys. You don't like, see like, that like a lot. Like yes, in the like, league? In the NBA, if they know there's a weak spot mm -hmm. or a weak defender or, or even a weak spot in the uh, defense's you know, area on the floor, they keep going to it. This is what Illinois did in the second half. They found a weakness. They continued to exploit that, and they hunkered down defensively, Jim. I thought two things, too. First half, Michigan State talked about 28 points in the paint. Mm -hmm. The second half, the adjustment was made by the Illini to keep Michigan State out of the paint, only 16 points. Yep. Matthew May uh, Meyer, 14 points in the second half. His last five games have been averaging 15 points. They needed that offense, especially from a jump shooting perspective. Yep. And you knew Brad Underwood was going to make these little adjustments to get his team back involved, get the crowd involved. I thought the second half, 53% shooting, shot 43% from the three, kind of settled in once their defense mm -hmm. kind of anchored in a little bit more. I think it fueled the offense. During that seven-game winning run for Michigan State, three-point shooting just under 40% mm -hmm. tonight. What was it? 0 for 7. Do you know what the percentage is on that one? Oh, uh, yeah. He went to Ohio Terrible. State. You can't, you can't quiz Terrible. him. He went to Ohio State. Terrible. That's a hard one. That's a hard one. Yeah, that's a hard one. <laughs> Terrible. 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 Just like the case, just like your phone case right now. No, that was, that was a water. The only ranked team in action tonight, third ranked Purdue Boilermakers, now off to their best start since 1993-94, when they also started the campaign 16-1. and They got their 16th win tonight as they manhandled Nebraska. Oh, watch your lawyer. Career high 27. Uh-huh. Yeah, he got the assist there to Caleb first. Zach Eady. 12 and 13, his 14th double double, second most in the nation, 73 55. Yeah. The final in that one. Matt Big. Painter, now the fifth in go. Big Ten history to hit 400 wins as a Big Ten coach. That's a pretty strong party list above him. Izzo Knight, Petey, and Lou Henson. Next up for Purdue, Monday mm -hmm. in East Lansing mm -hmm. on Fox. Yep. Third straight win for Purdue. Uh, what impressed you about the Boilermakers and how they went about business Methodically today? Methodically, just pick you apart. I thought the Ohio State game that we had, that I had, when they got back in the game and they understood time and score, didn't turn the basketball over, made you pay for double teaming Zach Eady. He's so much better now recognizing when the double team is coming and where to spray the ball. But it's also the advantage of this. When you go double teaming, who are you double teaming with? Yeah. A small guy. Yeah. So it never influences the passing angles in which it comes out. Matt Painter understands that, and he utilizes that skill set to open up other opportunities. Yeah, and the other opportunity was Lawyer, 27 points. Mm. Zach Eady is night in and night out. He is a sixth grader playing against third graders. <laughs> He really is. He's just so big. He might be in junior high. He might, he he might, he's a middle school. He, he was born in sixth grade. <laughs> <Yeah>. But, <laughs> you know, you, you look at his line and you think, okay, 12 points, 13 rebounds. But that's not really no, the effect nope. of the game. That, that doesn't mean anything, really, because the damage is done when he steps on the floor. You have to know where he is. Yeah. You have to decide how are you going to play him. 
And, and listen, Matt Painter, we know he's not just a good coach. He's a great coach. And another guy who says, all right, they've got that figured out. We have other weapons. And that's why you see Lawyer shooting the lights out because he's, he's taking advantage of your focus on Zach Eady, two, sometimes three guys, and Eady doing the great job of when he is in trouble, finding out, guys. Find out. Yep. Let's sneak in one more highlight earlier tonight here on FS1. Villanova trying desperately to get back on track. Last season's Final Four side had dropped four of their last five, including Tuesday's loss at DePaul, their first defeat to the Blue Demons in 15 years. Nova at Butler, both teams on a two-game losing streak. Simas Lukosius with the triple game high 28. Ty sitting at 60. He's under two to go. Butler up five. Mm -mm. I, I tell you, Butler, that, that was five or seven games they've won at Hinkle Fieldhouse over Villanova. Mm -hmm. Two of the best teams in the A-10, BCU at Dayton. Tsunami Kamara gets that to go. Career high 27 and 11, up four seconds left. Nick Kern, the steal. Mm, how about that? And the go-ahead layup. Get off the sideline. Pressure. Man. You. How about that? Taking the lead and on the road. Uh, under about a minute to go here as we head out mm. to Reno right now, and the guys calling the game. You guys are done for the night until it's halftime. We send it out to Trent oh, Rush and Jess Settle. No, no, you still got like more that. work to do. Uh -huh. Picking us out, like All right, thank you, Rob. It is a Mountain West showdown in the Sierras, Utah State. The Aggies in town here in Reno, Nevada, to take on the Nevada Wolfpack tonight. He's Jess Settles. My name is Trent Rush for a very important game when you talk about what this one could mean come March. We'll explain as we progress here tonight. Ryan Odom's the head coach at Utah State. The Aggies 14-3 and on the year 3-1 and in conference in year two here at this Aggie program. Impact players tonight, Jess. There's a lot of really players in this matchup. Well, Taylor Funk has been on fire lately. Ten out of his last seven, three, seven from, 17 from beyond the arc. Jaron Lucas, an elite shooter as well for Nevada, and Keenan Blackshear might be the key to this game. They've got to find a way to keep him from getting downhill. Nevada's head coach, Steve Alford, year four for him at Nevada, 32 at this point. As a head coach in college basketball, 657 all-time wins, third most all-time in the Mountain West. Of course, his days at New Mexico, stops at Iowa, UCLA in between that. And we are ready for tip-off here. Utah State takes the opening tip. We are underway here at the Waller Event Center in Reno, Nevada. Right away, they feed the big fella inside. No good doors. Great job blitzing that high ball screen. Utah State, so elite. 18 assists per game. They make the extra pass, lead the country in three-point shooting. They want to run and gun in this game, and they are great at it. That's a big fella that can knock down a three, and there you go. Out of the gate, Will Baker, the seven-footer from Texas, showing off the range. Uh, he's drilled four out of his last seven from beyond the arc. It's just unfair when he drags big guys out and rains threes on them. I was like saying, hey, we've heard all about Utah State shooting. We can knock down some threes as well. Meanwhile, Utah State able to get it inside that Shulga. We talked about him at junior. Uh, one of the best mid-range games in the Mountain West. He gets it in there about 13 to 15 feet. It's automatic. Jared Lucas, an elite scorer, a transfer from Oregon State. On the dish to Blackshear, the new point guard. There's Baker again. Oh, no good. Utah State tries to set up their offense. Jess, what are some keys that you're looking for in this matchup tonight? Well, we just saw one right there. Nevada's transition defense. That is critical. Utah State will ram it down your throat. You have to get back on makes and misses. Meanwhile, at the assignment underneath in a slam for Trevin Dorius. They are not just an elite three-point shooting team. They can dribble drive. They make the extra pass. They can score at all three levels. They just love to get each other open. Trying to feed the beast inside. Not there. Taken away. That's one thing that Nevada really wants to do in this game. Establish a post presence. So they feel they have an advantage. And that's a layup missed underneath. Big point of emphasis in the shoot around today. Get the ball inside. They're falling behind in these games early. They don't want to get in shootouts. They want to control pace and pound the rock inside. A swat right there. Dorius goes up for the rejection. 
Wichita State quickly. Ashford, and the leading three-point man, the leading three-point man in the country, missed the layup, but Funk gets it right back. Knocking down a tray, Shulga gets that one for Utah State. Boy, boy, these kids just play so well together, don't they? The extra pass, they know it's coming back to them. He is a cool customer, number 11. It's a veteran team, an older team. Rhino pushing them a little bit as well, just from the intellectual side when it comes to practice, what they're trying to do. Meanwhile, Utah State showing the tempo. That's going to be a foul. Free throws coming for Bearstow here. Right away, we are seeing the defense being established early on in this game. Uh, it's one thing to try to go inside. It's another to be able to finish, and nobody takes defense and turns it into offense better than Utah State. Just raining threes all over the conference. This is what they do. They drill 10 of those a game. Bearstow, the senior from Australia. So we talked about some keys to this one. Jess, and right away we're seeing Utah State pushing that tempo. Steve Alford said, look, we have to stop them from driving the basketball because, yes, they're a great three-point shooting team, but they can get to the rim as well, and transition just critical for Nevada. Got to get back. And for Utah State, look, Coach Odom said clearly, we got to guard them without fouling. Nevada, 18 free throws made per game. If you put your hands on them, they'll get to the line and punish you. Last year, finding Baker underneath and a foul. That's the thing about this Nevada team. Not only are they shooting at a high clip when it comes to free throws, they do a great job of getting to the line, drawing fouls. And, and that's where I think in some respects we may see some of the physicality of Utah State tested in this game. Well, no question. Well, they're going to put the ball to the rim. They're going to attack the rim. They don't need to fall in love with the three. Try to draw fouls. Utah State up for the challenge. Not a bad defense, but they just have such an elite offense that gets overshadowed. Jared Lucas, a great score, and misses that one. A lot of contact underneath. Not bad. Ashford able to save. Yeah, dangerous doubling the post if you're Nevada. Everybody on the court can shoot it for Utah State outside the five spot. Foul with eight to shoot. That's going to be against Nevada. We are seeing that physicality. That's got to be one area where I feel like Nevada probably has an advantage. They have to take advantage of it. Meanwhile, the deep three for Stephen Ashworth, the number one three-point shooter in the country with big-time range. Well, he is just so fun to watch. When he is in the gym, he feels like he's wide open. Was in a little bit of a slump, if you could call it that. One for his last seven from beyond the arc, but you're not going to hold him down. He is just sensational and automatic if he gets a glance at the rim. Utah State off and running here in Lawler. We're in Reno, Nevada, where the three ball is falling. 11-3, Utah State. Selfish, they're so experienced. Everybody on the court can hit threes. Average 81 points a game. They are used to blowing people out, and if you don't find their shooters, you're going to find yourself in a hole, and that's been the story lately for Nevada. Down to San Diego State early, down big to San Jose State. They just could not recover against San Diego State. And, you know, it's still early, but this is a dangerous couple minutes for them. they got to find a way to get buckets and get stops. We saw Nevada really tighten up that defense in the San Jose State win. They held the Spartans 12 and a half minutes scoreless there at the end. Meanwhile, a bucket underneath. There still gets another. So a 13-4 start for Utah State here on the road in conference. And pretty significant game. Feeding the point guard underneath. And it's amazing when you're that unselfish like Blackshear. You give it up when you have a decent shot, and you get it back for an easy shot. 6'6", six, six, Blackshear. Transition to a point guard this time of year due to a number of injuries here at Nevada, but that's too much space for Taylor Funk, who knocks down a triple. Right. He just can't miss lately. 
11 out of his last 18. He's so versatile. That was deep. Again, this is the scouting report, but it's a lot easier to talk about it and walk through it than it is to stop it. Funk at 22 and a 20-point win for Utah State against Wyoming. Team dealing with a number of injuries right now. Baker underneath. There he goes to work in the post. Yeah, that was a man's move, right? You know he's going to come back over that right shoulder. They have to get more out of him down around the basket. Poor pass. Splitting two defenders. Finally a whistle. Torres is going to go to the line here. Talk about this matchup and what it means for the bracketologists out there. This is a quad one game for each of these teams. So it, it is significant when you're talking about building a resume. If you're just a casual fan of college basketball, ultimately it's about building that resume for March. And this is a great opportunity that both of these teams have tonight. Absolutely. And that's the mindset coming in for the coaches and the players. A golden opportunity to move up in the conference standings and that quad one win. Those things are just so valuable for a Mountain West team. Both of these teams can compete with about anybody in the country. But you got to put a, put together a resume, and this is a golden opportunity for both squads. Nevada had a missed chance earlier this season in a loss to the Cayman Islands in overtime against Kansas State. Ended up forcing overtime there, but got beat in OT. They did get a big conference win against Boise State, which is their lone quad one win to this point. Utah State still looking for their first. And Nevada's got to find a way to get Lucas involved in this game. He's five out of his last 19 from beyond the arc. He's a scorer. He's got to knock these down. Right on cue. Jared Lucas, welcome to the show. Transfer from Oregon State, fourth leading three-point shooter in the pack a year ago has come to the Mountain West. Now one of the best three-point shooters in this conference. Out of rock. Four to shoot. Shulga in the lane. Offensive foul, Shulga. So we see Utah State's offense. So you just see. Well, here's Nevada. Here's Lucas. That step back is nasty. It looked like he was sliding under, but a pretty good defensive possession for Nevada. Good dig by Lucas. Late shot clock possession, but come right back to number two here if you're Nevada and pull the trigger. Just was that arm moving a little bit, maybe? Had to be. No question. Foster on the tape. He's out of bounds. Yeah, and sometimes you're just a little too unselfish, right? You had the right thought process there, but when you're that close to the rim, you got to put it up. You're just throwing the ball to a guy who's trying to block out. Akin, number 30 for Utah State, their big man inside. That's a turnover. Comes off the bench, replace Starver minutes. Here in a foul. It's just the last couple of possessions for Nevada. That's Steve Alford defense. Every time he's had a great team, they've been elite defensively, and that's how they got to change the momentum of this game. Defensive end, they're going to get baskets, but you've got to take the possession, and that was just an easy one for Funk. What a steal. Funk a steal, misses the lamp, gets it back, puts it in. You think he did that on purpose? You know, Pat, just trying to, get, yeah, trying to get those rebounding numbers. I see you, Funk. I like that. <laughs> Funk averaging about 14 and 6 on the season. That's what Jimmy Jackson used to do at Ohio State, right? Just miss those <laughs> open ones, flirt with those triple doubles, get the rebounds. <laughs> trying to answer in the post. Not happening. Nick Davidson, the retro freshman. Davidson's been so good the last three games. But that was an incredible post. He got deep and just didn't finish. Off the back, the rim for shoulder. It's another freshman, Williams, who has it now.
Davidson knocking it down from distance. 15.6 boards, 93% from the free throw line over the last three games. He's become one of the better freshmen in the country. Utah State's the team known for their bench, but it's the Nevada bench that's coming in, bringing a spark. Ackett on the miss. Here come the Wolfpack. Williams on the take. Into the corner. Good look at a three missed. Shulga gets it knocked out of his hands on the take. They're going to call this on the floor. Well, Taylor Funk, I mean, he's an elite offensive player, but he can make things happen at the defensive end as well and kind of loses his balance. Pretty good D. He knew what he was doing. He had five Aggies score 20 plus points in a game, and they're doing it again tonight. All five starters are the prime players, average double figures. You can see how often those key five for Utah State are scoring in double figures. There's only 10 teams in the country that have all five averaging 10 plus. Utah State being one of them. 1.031 points per possession. That's in the 99th percentile in all the land. And it's every night. It is hard to guard them. You've got to guard the three-point line and you have to stop dribble penetration as well. Hamona for three. Has the efficiency rate on that. Pretty darn good. There's Blackshear. Working some post moves. Right-handed finish. Well, there's just no one better than him getting downhill. If he gets into that paint, he's automatic. And what a problem for the rest of the league. I'm a 6'6 point guard. He wasn't going to be the point guard. Transitioned to that right before the season due to some injuries. And has taken on that role. Has become a great distributor, but also has the ability to do that underneath. Here's Blackshear again. Time on the dish. Second chance. Powell now. Look out for Ashworth. He's got some space. And hits the three. So right when Nevada cuts it to a possession, Ashworth comes back and knocks down a big time tray. Well, he said Ashworth feels like he's open whenever he's in the gym. And I mean, that's just the breakdown defensively. You can't close out soft. You have to run him off of the line. 73% of his shot attempts come from beyond the arc, so it doesn't matter if he puts it on the floor. You just can't come out soft like that, or he'll have 10 of them in this game. Just an elite three-point shooter. Shooting over 51% on the season. I thought that was a typo when I started studying the notes. I mean, he's on track to have the best three-point shooting team in Utah State basketball history. It's been that kind of a year for Stephen Ashworth. Pettigrew slips off. Blackshear just trying to take it from him. And the arrow belongs to the Wolfpack. Now this is what you have to do. You gotta pick him up early, get in there and try to make things happen. You cannot lose track of where he is once he crosses half court. You gotta see Blackshear be a little more aggressive offensively. He's making some good assists, teammates not knocking him down. He's gotta post up or drive the ball to the rim, try to get fouled, make things happen. Lucas to Pettigrew. The Seton Hall transfer with seven to shoot. Goes to work in the post. Dances on the rim, doesn't fall. Yeah, it's just a tough possession. Blackshear gives it up, but he never gets it back on that side of the court. Idle Rock on the other end, no. Second chance. And Akin got hit, so he's going to get a chance to get a couple of free throws here. Dan Akin's an interesting player. 6'9", yeah. grad transfer from England, a player that... Brian Odom had at UMBC. Remember when that team ended up winning that game with the number one overall in Virginia back in 2018. Atkin took the opening tip-off in that game. 
the only remaining player in college basketball from that win. Well, the last game out, he had 16 points and 15 rebounds. He's got five double-doubles coming off of the bench. What's so amazing about him, we talk about their offense. What's so great about him is he can guard all five positions at the defensive end. So he can switch all those ball screens. We got a free throw yeah, violation here. But he can guard ball screens, which makes Utah State able to get stops and get out and run. So the former Labrador retriever went to Cal Baptist. He's made his way back to being with Ryan Odom here at Utah State. And the lane violation results in a point. So a three possession lead for Utah State now. Blackshear. Yeah, just put on the take. Yeah, on the take, the step back. That's money. Yeah, that, that's what he has to do. I mean, we, we mentioned Jimmy Jackson before. That's what Jimmy used to do, right? That mid-range jumper, collapse of defense. He's got to take over these games. Sometimes two on selfish guards himself. Acky gets rid of it. I'm trying to find the slash for taking away. And that time. Pushing it underneath. Blackshear doing a little bit of everything right now for this Nevada Wolfpack team. Well, he's just become a great point guard. That mid-range game is so nice. He can elevate up. He can push off. He's so physical. Just look at the physicality. There's just not a lot you can do about that. Sometimes he passes the ball too much. It's one thing to be unselfish. It's another to know when your team needs buckets. In the last five games, he's just been doing a lot of everything. The ultimate stat stuffer. He needs to have 20 in this game for Nevada to beat Utah State. Not bad for a guy that really hasn't had the greatest shooting season. But they're not asking him to shoot. They're asking him to distribute, get to the basket. This is the matchup nightmare in the post as well. It's Lucas on the inbound, scores too easy right there for the Wolfpack. the take. Akin underneath. No. Second chance. Yes. Well, Akin does such a nice job of setting hard screens. He lets Ashworth go around him. Then he rolls hard. And again, they, these guys just like to pad their offensive rebound stats. Lucas had the ball in his hands for about three-tenths of a second on a catch and shoot right there for Nevada. Jared Lucas can get going. That's usually a great sign for this Wolfpack team. They need him. Time and help defense, making it tougher on Utah State. Oh, good closeout by Davidson. Wide open in the corner. Hamoda went for the flush. No, Akin can't get the second chance either. Last year, turning on the Jets, but. Jared Lucas, the Oregon State transfer, rolling right now as Nevada climbing back. Yeah, I talked to Lucas before the game. I said, how's your game lately? He said, I haven't been shooting it great, but it's the law of averages. I'm going to shoot well tonight. You inspired the Lexus ES to be, well, more you. So thank you. We hope you like your work. Sargento. Yum, yum, yum. He's a three-point shooter. He goes to Oregon State, takes the beams to the Elite Eight. They have a three-win season last year. He wants to go somewhere he can win. Meanwhile, you have Steve Alford saying, hey, I need a shooter. I need a scorer. And makes that phone call. And all of a sudden, Lucas in the transfer portal ends up here in Reno. And what a difference he has made and a godsend in many ways for this Nevada team that thought they were going to have their point guard, Hunter McIntosh, from Elon that's missed so much time tonight. K.J. Himes this season has missed a bunch of time. You could argue those are maybe two of their best players. Well, before K.J. got injured, they were one of the elite defensive teams in the country, and they had a chance to play into the second weekend if they had their full squad. They are still a very good team. They're going to be an NCAA tournament team, but that original squad they had was just outstanding, and hopefully everybody will come back. If everybody comes back, they get a chance to go to the Final Four. They could be that good next year. Time to shoot for Lucas. Deep in the shot clock. Hits it. 
for Lucas. Nevada with their first lead of the night. Funk to answer. Got it. He just reads screens so well. His basketball IQ is off the charts. If you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. He just pops out and just imagine trying to guard all of these Aggies who just come off the screens and fire it. Got it. Lucas with Ashworth on it. Step back, another three. My goodness, he's on fire. 13 for Lucas. He's hit three threes, and Nevada takes the lead right back. Have to save it. Shulga. Atkin couldn't hang on to it. How about the stars shining under the neon here in Reno? What a ball game. Pops out off the screen, close out late. That's just a high percentage look for him. And Lucas just decided to take this game over like Steve Alford back in the day playing for Bob Knight at Indiana. <laughs> well, that 87 team was good. Look at that Jared Lucas stretch. Has just been a force of that 28.9 against Air Force. Jared Lucas, a premier scorer here in the Mountain West. Flash here. Trying to go up with authority. Be all over the highlight reel, but a foul first. Well, I love the play call. You put Lucas under the basket, and he's the one who clears out. You've got to go with him, which opens up the lane for Blackshear, and he almost put him on a poster. This was close. Good call by the official. I love the draw to use Lucas as the decoy. I'm impressed by Blackshear's speed when he kicks it up and tries to attack. I mean, he goes to the basket with some real authority. Uh, look, that's what Coach Odom was talking about today, right? He, he's very difficult to stop. The speed, the power, the toughness. If he can find a way to get his three-point shot going, then he's going to be unstoppable. Another transfer that came over from Florida Atlantic a couple of years ago has made a big impact. Way deep for Funk. And he rattles it in. What is going on? Boy, fireworks here in Reno tonight. Six threes for Utah State, five for Nevada. Both teams shooting over 50% from behind the arc. Funk gives it up this time. Dorius gets hit. Well, How hit. deep was this? You missed that mid-range jumper. It puts pressure on your defense. I mean, that's just impossible to guard. That's Steph Curry range right there. That's just, that's just a great player being great. Funk was the second leading three-point shooter in the Atlantic 10 the last couple of years. Here he comes to Mountain West, number two in this league, only behind his teammate, Stephen Ashworth. Yeah, yeah, how's that feel, right? You're shooting 40% from beyond the arc. No one can stop you, Nick. You're not even close in percentage to your teammate, number three. That's the type of pressure they put on the defense. But again, Nevada, when they miss those shots at the rim or those mid-range jumpers, you have to get back against Utah State. Their transition offense is outstanding. Dorius gets both free throws to put the Yankees back out in front. We knew how important this game was going to be for these two teams coming in. And here in the first half, it has lived up to it. Blackshear now, willing his way to the basket before he stopped. Ashworth now. Great dish and bears those scores. Yeah, see, that's the second time in a row they've been burned in transition. Why? Because Blackshear gets too deep, and then he can't get back and get the ball stopped. It's a scramble. You're discombobulated, and that's when Utah State makes you pay. 
as good as Ashworth has been from behind the arc. And in the last game against Wyoming, he was only two of seven, but had a season high seven assists. No whistle. Baker and a flop after the bucket. Which means free throw will be coming for Nevada after this. Ashworth doing it all. Goes right to the hoop. Says, hey, I can dish it off too. Bears the game. He's been leading on the man next to him. Right there for a long time, Craig Neal Noodles. Technical free throw. Noodles, the offensive coordinator. These guys have known each other since the third grade. Noodles' his dad, Southern Indiana basketball coach, where Coach Alford's parents went to school, and grandparents, and used to visit them, and they go over to the gym and shoot hoops together. That's a long relationship. Yeah, who replaced Alford at New Mexico. Bear still goes up, and Baker gets a swat. And Baker gets tripped up, runs into Funk there, and that's going to be a foul and a turnover. Yeah, really bad luck for Baker. Just an elite defensive play. Bear still had the advantage out of nowhere, and then he runs the court, tries to get down there and beat the center, and bull rushes. It's a good call going the other way. It's good to see Will Baker really active down low. We know that he loves to shoot the three, and he's really good at it. He's got great range, but for a, a former five-star recruit that started at Texas, didn't work out in Austin. He's from Austin. That's where he wanted to be. Parents went there. Now he's in Reno, and we're seeing him with this Nevada team really stepping up. Second chance bucket good there for Torius. And Torius is... Playing more minutes than we normally see out of him and contributing in a big way. He's so big and so physical. It's just a perfect compliment to all these guards running off the screens and drilling threes. Lucas absorbing the contact. Go to the line for a pair. Baker steps up. It's caught no man's head. This is becoming a trend, right? Intentionally missed the first shot. <laughs> Get your offensive rebound. Moses Malone should be here for this. 7'1", 240 pounds. Trevin Dorius says, all right. I know I missed it. It's okay. Finishes the job. Well, 60% of Lucas's shots are from the three-point line. But don't let that fool you. He is not a one-dimensional player. He can post up. He can defend, and as you just saw right there, he can put the ball on the floor. And they run a ton of staggers for him. He comes off of those hard, rises up, makes shots. He's becoming a complete player, and they have sure needed his explosion in this first half. Great job by Nevada overcoming that deficit to get back in one of the better games we've watched so far this year. Fifteen first-half points for Lucas. Sugar. Turn around two is good. That was well defended, I thought, by Nevada. We talked about his mid-range game off the top, and that's just what he does. A junior from Ukraine. Lucas the hot hand. Wow. He checked Trey. Doesn't go. I mean, everything else is falling tonight. Why not? We're trying to get going. Knock loose. Plenty of time. And he gets hit hard in the post. He gets some free throws. Well, that's a good call. I mean, Davidson had good position, but then watch his arm. Watch him reach around and hack down right there. That's just an easy one for the officials. A freshman mistake. Mackens just keeps pounding it out of crab dribble, crab dribble. You just have to square up, show your hands, and have it go over the top. That, that's a move right there. Dan Akin. I mean, he was playing in the NCAA tournament, winning an NCAA tournament game in 2018, going up against a freshman. And that was just the experience showing in that post play. Absolutely. Just pounded, pounded. He knew he would probably make a mistake. And Got him a little too deep. Got bailed out. 67% free throw shooter. Just made such a huge impact for this team at both ends of the floor. 
Rutgers, Utah State, you cannot let Lucas get a touch here coming off of these down screens. And there's one right there. Lucas has been doing everything for Nevada. It's too open. It doesn't fall. Now, sometimes you have a great possession and you don't score, but Lucas was just brilliant. Reading those screens and he got the shot he wanted. Just didn't fall for it. Adelot got bumped. Now the foul situation being what it is, more free throws on the way. So that's nine against Nevada. Adelot going to the line for a one and one chance. Gets the first. Senior, another UMBC transfer that came over with Ryan Odom and the entire staff has been together for a long time. Look at these guys, the third oldest team in the land. Is that not what I read? I mean, these guys were listening to music on CDs. <laughs> and they don't understand that era like we grew up with. Alford's going to call a timeout for Nevada. And yeah, yeah, an old team with a coaching staff that has been together for at least five years. Some of them incredible players, a great non-conference. They've just been able to compete with about everybody. And look, I, I, I'm buddies with Mike DeCourcy, so if you're a Mountain West fan, don't worry. I'll, I'll have dinner with him. <laughs> You'll get at least three in, and I'll talk him into the fourth. Mountain West had four in a year ago, including Wyoming, who's in the play. Nevada for, looking for their first points in about two minutes. Darian Williams gets it. That stops the drought and a bucket out of the timeout. Coaches love that. Final 15 seconds of the half. Four for Shulga. Two seconds. Shulga for three. Can't get it. Utah State going to take a five point lead in the halftime. 42-37. I'm Trent Rush with Jess Settles. Jess, what do you think that Steve Alford was talking to his team about at halftime? Because this is one where defensively, got to imagine Nevada's trying to figure out how to stop this Utah State juggernaut of an offense. Well, I guarantee you he did most of the talking. I've known him for many years, and he's the defensive guru, and he's telling his guys, look, if we don't guard, we're not going to win. 42 points is way too much. 16 points in the paint for Utah State, 8 fast break points, 6 threes, 12 free throws, so they didn't take anything away. They've got to close out hard in this first four minutes on the three-point line. And that's a travel that's a right out of the game. There you go. Extend the defense, make them put the ball on the floor, too soft on the closeouts in the first half. I think for Nevada on the offensive end, look, Lucas, Blackshear, Baker, they were great. 32 of their 37 first half points. They need some of those other X-Factor guys to step up. And take. Yeah, the freshmen have been really good, especially at San Diego State, so they're not afraid of the moment. they got to find a way to get stops. That's their number one priority. Meanwhile, for Utah State right now, it seems like everyone's clicking. Ashworth hit two in the first half. Can't get the third. Maybe he was too open. Meanwhile, a slam for Funk. Check that. That was the big man, Dorius, coming in and throwing it down. It looked like Lucas might have been hit in the head and falls down to the ground. And the offensive rebound makes it five against four. And that's the easiest bucket he'll have this year on slam cam. Coming right in your living room. Trevin Torius, nine points here in the first half for a guy that only averages about four and a half a game. Lucas, another tough shot. That one doesn't go. Torius, the rebound. Funk feeding Torius, but a foul on a late whistle. And 7-1 big from Heber City, Utah. He's going to get a couple of free throws. You said it. Man. What an impact he's had on this game. And it looked like, like that from Angle there. That, uh, yeah, there's a little shove on the hip. And he's displaced him just to have to get the whistle. So, Torius, 
now all of a sudden has himself in double figures for a player that, again, limited minutes. He plays backup minutes. I know he starts, but it does not get a whole lot of playing time. Generally, it's Dan Ekin that's the man patrolling the paint. But Dorian's doing a good job in this one against Baker. Matchup of seven footers. Baker on the miss three. Lucas can't do everything. Transition take gets stopped. Torius running the floor, rewarded the free throws. I don't know what he had for breakfast, but he better have it the next game as well because he has been so aggressive around the rim. He's cleaning up the misses. That's just all heart right there. Comes around Baker. Baker had. The angle did not block out. And big number 32 just rolls to the ball. Should have called that one on the ground. So a possession here for Utah State on the inbound. That's Funk on the miss. Up ahead, Baker. Baker with the left hand and flush. Other end, Dorius can't get it. Like to have that one back. Blackshear now to the basket. And after missing the dunk, picks up a foul on the other end. Well, you don't see fast breaks a lot out of Nevada, but they'll strike when they get the chance. Big time Statue of Liberty by Baker. And then what a turn of events. A missed dunk at one end. There's Baker again coming right at you, but... Free throws, those are baskets on the road that you have to finish a two-handed dunk right at the rim. This thing could come down to the wire. That was a critical miss. Well, I will see. Kenny Blanchard back to the line. There's Dorius, three-time academic, all-conference player, pursuing his master's in business administration. Gets the nod playing more tonight. You'd think just because of the matchup with the seven-footer Baker, just the size advantage, it'd be a mismatch if you have Akin in there at six foot nine. Worked out so far, so good for Ryan Orton. Five-point game. Ashworth on the take. Because I'm not just a shooter. I go to the hoop. Well, he, he was smiling at the crowd a little bit. He's he's not used to getting to the rim that easily. Baker. The point guard from the post finds the center top of the circle three. You're exactly right. You know, he draws so much attention. Gets deep. He's an elite passer. And, Great shot by Baker. He's come to play in this second half. 13 now for Baker. Gets beat by Akin there and scores in traffic. Count it and one. Tremendous rip through. Baker falls down and that's just bad luck. He falls into... Atkins, great jab step. Incredible offensive play. Well, that's as much of an ankle breaker as you're going to get from a post player right there. And Atkins converts with three-point play. Seven-point lead now for Utah State. Every time Nevada has a chance to take the lead, get some momentum, Something's going to happen where Utah State will come back and take the lead. Tap it all night. Yeah, they just don't panic, right? Veteran team. Been a lot of these battles on the road to make the smart plays when they need them most to stop the momentum. And... The first on Ashworth. We should mention the foul that was on Dorius earlier in the half sent him to the bench with four. So he's on the bench right now. For Davidson, right hand hook, no. Blackshear. 
Aiken was there, so he couldn't come. Davidson, the freshman, to the hoop. Hustling it inside for two. Another good pass by Williams to an open teammate, but Davidson, about two or three times in this game, has won the battle of the post before the pass got there. Stoppage on the floor as Aiken hustles over to his sideline. So meet with the athletic trainer. As we step aside, Utah State maintaining a five-point lead right now. 16-19 remaining here in this ball game, and a good one in the Mountain West. Chevy Silverado factory lifted trucks. Where will they take you? Kevin Kruger, his dad, Lawn, 1,100 wins, couple of Final Fours, crazy. And then that's not even to mention on the other side here, Steve Alford, 657 career wins. Steve Alford, I mean, still young, still had a lot of years yeah. to add wins to that. His dad, Sam Alford, a coaching legend in the state of Indiana. So just a lot of guys who grew up at the kitchen table learning about X's and O's, how to win, and how to overcome losses, right? That's that's what you learn as a coach's son. You don't get too high, you don't get too low. Takeaway right there underneath is Darian Williams. Knocked him loose. Getting a lot of scoring out of Williams tonight, but the assists, the defense, the physicality, seven boards a game, leads his team in rebounding. And they need that. I mean, Will Baker, look, he's not really a rebounder for being seven feet tall. And a foul with six to shoot. Stops a take. It's going to be Lucas who gets hit. Shot clock is reset to 20. Lucas called for the foul. Foul on Davidson. And now we talk so much about Nevada being the team to draw whistles. It's Utah State doing that. Yeah, it's a good call. Another great roll by Atkins. And they get a shot up, up top, but... When he rolls that hard, it just puts a lot of pressure on the defense. And... Yeah, Atkins just lost the handle on that one. Turnover. Missed chance. Well, this Nevada team still leaning on basically three players. And Lucas, Blackshear, and Baker. 39 to the 44. And then once again, Blackshear to the basket and one opportunity. He's just so good at getting downhill. Another great call from the sideline. The lane opens up. That can get him on the top of the head. And this is just what he does better than anybody in the country. He is so strong. Takes the hit. Got fouled early. No call. And one. Parades to the free throw. Big time move by Blackshear. What a game, partner. <laughs> Nevada's such a good free throw shooting team. Talked about it earlier. Top 10 in the country. Two point game. Utah State. The ball on the lead. Pearstow willing his way to the hoop. Stopped. Blackshear gave it away. Ashworth in the corner. Shot he typically makes. Davidson. He's got range too. And Nevada's on top by one. Just the third bucket all night for a Wolfpack player outside their big three. The response was missed by Funk. Davidson saves it to Blackshear for two. A 10 0 run for the Nevada Wolfpack. Lined up early in this one that he was going to be on the attack. Moves so well without the ball, but this is where he's just absolutely lethal. 
coming downhill into the paint. People just bounce off of him. One of the most physical and talented point guards in the country. Not bad for a guy who's just playing the position for the first time this year, right? Incredible. We could talk about the offense. How about the four steals he's created as well? Getting it done on both ends. Looking up full court right here. He's feeling it. Got him slide his feet. Utah State led by as many as 10 in the first half. Tend to shoot. Atkin gets stopped. Doesn't draw iron, but a foul with one second on the shot clock. He just wasn't going to be denied. He knew the clock was running down. Good defense on the initial hit, but goes up and gets himself to the free throw line. Mr. Double-Double off the bench. Five double-doubles on the year. Leads the country in double-doubles coming off the bench. He's got eight and seven so far in this game. Foul on Williams. And they're actually going to say not a shooting foul. They're going to call that one on the floor. But the shot clock still gets reset to 20, so a full chance of the possession here for Utah State. Trying to find Funk. Ashworth gets it to him, and Funk scores, stopping the run. Big bucket there for the Aggies. No question. Anytime you can score on those underneath out-of-bounds plays, those are just backbreakers after a pretty good defensive sequence there by Nevada over the last three or four. Yeah, those are the first points for Utah State in over three minutes. <laughs> Coleman. Ooh, tough shot. Good defense by Utah State. I mean, their defense is so underrated. Bearstone gets hit going up. And how about that sequence right there for Utah State? Well, they get so much attention, right, because they lead the country in three-point shooting. But they are a good, stout defensive team. They know how to run underneath out of bounds play. Davidson just falls asleep a little bit and Funk, so crafty. We talked about his basketball IQ. Saw Davidson turn his head, went to the basket. Easy basket. First one misses the free throw, but you get the inbound on a foul with one second on the shot clock. You get the stop on the other end, get out in transition and get yourself to the line. I mean, that, that's just really good veteran basketball, the kind of basketball you see in the NCAA tournament. I mean, if you're a high school coach, a small college coach, and you want to teach your kids how to play, you watch Utah State, right? A ton of scores, guys who are veteran players, they're so fun to watch, the synergy, the chemistry, the extra pass. You're exactly right, they just make smart basketball plays. Even though with all the depth and balance of the Aggies, it's basically three guys getting it done for Nevada right now. Lucas is one of them. Man, that's a tough shot, and he got it. Are you kidding me, Jared Lucas? That's where you want him to shoot it if you're the defense, but sometimes great defense doesn't matter, especially against Lucas. Ashworth from another zip code. Hits it. The stars are out tonight. Blackshear was touched by Bearstone. Ten seconds. Oh, my. Oh, my. Right there. So good for Keenan Blackshear. We talked about Atkin being able to switch on the point guards, and that was good in the initial defense, but Blackshear just playground move. Another tough shot for Nevada. Back and forth we go. Funk. Feed Mackin. Four seconds for Shulga. Bearstone in the corner. Got it in time. And now it's the Aggies by two.
Oh, those are just killers, aren't they, late in the shot clock? The second time that that has happened, Nevada playing extremely hard defensively. And it doesn't matter. Utah State, the extra pass, the big-time shot. Eighth three of the night for Utah State, but how about this back and forth we got going on here in Reno tonight, Jess? Well, one of the best games of the year in the Mountain West. Coming down to the wire, blow for blow, shot for shot. Stick around, everybody. We got a great one coming. Games at the Grand Canyon Islands Classic. The weather was a little warmer there, obviously. <laughs> Steve Alford just <laughs> raved to me. He said, this is my first career. He said, you got to come call a game here. Just a tremendous area, great fans. Tremendous basketball, but it is beautiful. You see why people come from all around the world. Ashworth can't get it. Trying to get a second chance. Atkin goes crashing into the pitch. That's going to be Nevada basketball here. So Nevada gets a stop coming out of the timeout. And good to see Will Baker back out on the floor. He was on the bench for an extended time. He was on for about six minutes. He was on the floor. Davidson filled that role. And Nevada matched Utah State step for step. Uh, no question. they got to go to him right now in the next couple of sessions. He's really fresh. He's got to do something with it around the rim. Here they go. After the break, gets the bucket. I, he took what the defense gave him. He wanted to drive that, but he didn't want to pick up a charge. He just pulled up. He's got such a sweet stroke. I mean, Jess, the former head coach, is, that's a foul. I mean, that's one for Baker, too. Got to be able to work through. Let the big guy breathe for a minute. Got him the rest that he needed. But again, this is not one where you want to attack the defense. Just pull up, take what they give you. Not happy with the call. Yeah, that's because that's the fourth on Trey Coleman. That's a big foul here with 10-20 to play. Josh State has a little bit of foul trouble, at least with their starting center, Dorius, who's got four. Alford not happy about it at all. Front end of the one and one is good for Ashworth. But just as a former head coach, you got a big guy, seven footer, you know you need him down the stretch, you know you need those minutes. It's still a gamble to give him a six minute break in the second half. Well, Davidson was just playing so well. He was so active, he was physical, and they just kept going with that momentum and it got them back into the game. But right now, Baker. He's got the rest, no excuses. He's got to play physical and hard over the next four or five minutes. Trying to get to Lucas, Pettigrew finds him. Baker got fouled by Atkin right there, which will be his second. Very difficult play to guard. Flare screen to Lucas on the opposite side, and then he's able to kick it back to Baker, who can also stretch the defense. Baker working for it in the post. Gives it back to Blackshear. And a foul on Ackett, and that's two on this trip for their big man. He's got three. Maybe with that early hand on the hip, but, and maybe a root out with the thigh, but they, they've been battling like that all night, so... It's kind of a let him play right there. Yeah, we haven't seen many of those called at all tonight. Pettigrew back to Baker. This match is on. Six seconds. Blackshear gets bumped. And that's going to be against Utah State. EJ Edelrock. Australia. So now back into the game for Utah State comes Trevin Dorius. Again, kind of a sleeper on the roster, but has had a great game playing with four fouls right now. Yeah, go right at him. Now bring it right back into Baker. Lower your shoulder and force a whistle. 
Blackshear just muscling his way in the post. Blackshear's post-up game can take him to a lot of levels. Five seconds, Bearstow answers on the other end. Shot for shot, this matchup has been outstanding tonight. Such an explosive athlete. He takes the hit and soaring up in the air to release that shot. He's improved his outside jumper, but that is just a brilliant one-on-one -on -one play by a tremendous athlete. Lucas to the hoop. Can't get the kiss, but got it back. Baker, right off the iron, and a third chance. Blackshear, with the tank, Blackshear gets it. Third time's the charm for the Wolfpack. It just feels like there are two Darian Williams on the court. Defense, offense, rebounds, deflections, assists. He's just doing everything little to lead his team to victory. He's so fun to watch. Big collision right there on the rebound, and that's going to be five there on Trevin Dorius. He's fouled out. Meanwhile, Blackshear, who just got hit, says, let me just show you this, getting right to the basket. And we're all square under eight. Very confident. They can make a lot of noise in March. Blackshear looking to add to his total. So if you're just joining us, it was Utah State that had an early 10 point lead in this game. We had a chance to see the Yankees take a five-point lead in the halftime, but Nevada has stepped up, really riding three players. And Blackshear, who just got that free throw with Lucas and Baker. 22, 17, 15, respectively. 23 now for Blackshear. You're in the battle. You have to know where the three-point shooters are. Continue to run Utah State off the three-point line. If you're Utah State, make sure you know where Lucas is. Blackshear has the ball in his hand. It's hard to get it out of his hands, but don't let Lucas come off the staggers and hit the zone. Funk looking to respond. And the number one three-point shooting team in the nation. Two for nine here in the second half. Lucas with 12 to shoot. Baker, left hand hook, got it! That's the old Bob Knight triangle play that Steve Alford's been running. They could not get the ball to Baker on the initial action, but they were patient and came back to him on the secondary play, and he made it pay off huge. Back up top, Shulga's got to get it, no! Keep working it through Baker. He is fresh and he is hungry. To the basket, Blackshear. He's going to get some free throws and what's already been a career night for him. Almost impossible to stop that hook shot by Baker. They didn't get to him on the other side, but they stayed patient. Worked it inside, bounce pass. Tough shot. Actually, giving him a little love right there. Those two are working well together right now. And the great decision by Coach Alford and the staff to keep Davidson in the lineup there when things were working. Give Baker some rest. And when 
down at the Grand, Grand Cayman Islands, those two were on the floor a lot together. Yeah. But with all the injuries, they just couldn't afford that foul trouble. They're, they're backing each other up, and it's working pretty well. But, doggone it. KJ, yeah, he was playing so well. The run protector, such great chemistry. But the freshmen have stepped up, and they're going to have to be huge down the stretch. Blackshear, the converted wing. He's become a point guard and having a career night on a national stage in a huge game at home against Utah State. Nevada up six, their biggest lead of the night. I like the punk setting the screens and popping. The pick and pop with punk. Shoulder willing his way. No. Lucas ends up with it and gets fouled by Ankin. And that's going to be four. That's just world-class defense. Does not bite. Lucas stays on the floor. 50-50. Both guys hustling. Both teams going after it. Gets him there on the arm. I like to see Utah State use Funk as the screener. Pick and pop. Force a decision by the defense and let him spread the court. We saw Nevada go on a 10-0 run earlier in the half. Lucas hitting the front end of a 1-1, one one, now a 9-0 run for the Wolfpack here in the second half. at halftime. They had to take away the three-point shot. They've done that. They've been physical. Akin goes to the ground. Baker takes advantage. Aggies need a timeout. Will Baker just going to work with that left hand in the post. And now it's a 12-0 run for Nevada. Will Baker, a big-time second half. And, boy, the big three for the Wolfpack have showed out in a big way tonight. The, the decision to rest Baker, it changed the game. He didn't like sitting over there that long. Coach Alford challenged him. You're fresh. Get in there and dominate. We're going to come to you. They've come to him over and over again. Blackshear, Baker, Lucas. Baker has stepped up at one of the best five-minute runs here we've seen out of him this year. If he can play at this level, they're going to be tough to beat. Boy, in the Mountain West Conference, these two teams right up there at the top. San Diego State has been outstanding this year. But, boy, Boise State's been so good. New Mexico won their first 14 games this year. A great start, but they had a couple of losses last week. And you look at where these two teams are at. I mean, really, five teams probably feel like they belong out of the Mountain West in the NCAA tournament. Maybe they get four again. Maybe they get three again. Hard to say. I, I think if you look at the level in this league, you can make a very good case why at least four belong. Well, no question. I mean, these teams can play with anybody in the country. San Diego State and Coach Dutcher's done there. It's just remarkable. The defense that they play, the toughness they play with. Nevada, Utah State. Can you imagine scouting Utah State with a one-day turnaround? They can shoot you out of the gym. It's just a fantastic league at the top. Tomorrow night, it's Fox Primetime Hoops featuring a Pac-12 showdown between Colorado and 7th ranked UCLA. It all tips off at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on Fox in the Fox Sports app. They don't have a hooping out west. And Nevada 
led by Steve Alford, their head coach, now in year four at the helm of this program, has these students pumped up for resurgence. It was in 2018. With that, it went to the Sweet 16. They returned to the big dance the year after that. Haven't been since. There was a review at the end of that last play, trying to see if they were to call it flagrant or not, but it stands for common foul. Ashworth gets to the bucket around Baker, missed the shot. The Aggies have gone cold. second half for Nevada. This has been brilliant at both ends of the court. Great decisions, toughness, closing out on the three-point shooters, rebounding. A little heat check from the big man. <laughs> you, you think Baker's feeling pretty good right now? In transition, no a rejection. Trey Pettigrew with the swat. Wolfpack trying to pile on. Baker from range. You bet. Taken away by Baker. Botcher on the break. The 24 points for Will Baker tonight, a new career high. Blackshear's already got a career night, missed that one. Aggie's running out of time. And just gave it away. calls a timeout. We'll step aside. Blackshear, Baker, everybody for the Wolfpack. And then Pettigrew on defense. <laughs> yeah. Spectacular defense by Nevada. Gave up 42 points in the first half to Utah State. I think I have them for only 22 so far in the second half. This is the Baker we've been waiting to see. This is the Baker that they wanted so badly in Austin and Texas. It just didn't work there. Now here he is in Nevada, dominating in the Mountain West as Blackshear adds on to his career night. Double team, and I don't blame Utah State, but Will Baker makes him pay. Nice assist to Blackshear. Right now you need three-point shots, and you need them quickly from Utah State. To think that around the nine-minute mark, Utah State had a two-point lead. It's a 17-point lead now with Blackshear 28, Baker 24. These two just dominate. It was Lucas in the first half, kept him in the game, and then his, his two partners just came in the second half and surged at just the right time. Utah State struggled a little with composure at Boise State a couple games ago on the road. They played tough in this game, but haven't been able to knock down the three-point shot in the second half, some timely ones. Nevada's defense has been so stout. You just won't see a better defensive performance in the last 10 minutes in the Mountain West this year. So if you're a Utah State fan, that Nevada 19-0 run mercifully comes to an end here with about two minutes to go in this game. But Nevada absolutely taking over in the second half, doing it with their star power. I'm glad you mentioned Lucas, who has the ball now, because there were some moments 
Look, Nevada was down by five at halftime. It could have been 12, 14. It could have gotten away from the Wolfpack, if not for Lucas. Williams getting into the action. And then a rejection. They're on their feet here in Reno. A worthy ovation. Can't quite get to 30 just yet. Still has a minute. That's a funk. Second chance, good. Time on the floor. Less than 53 seconds left. Utah State calls their final timeout. Steve Words, 93% from the free throw line. The defense he played with Baker on the on the bench was, was spectacular. He's tough to guard, but he's way ahead of schedule from, you know, from my standpoint, breaking down these games. Southern California guy, Mission Viejo. Gone from the beach to the mountains. What a great run. Utah State, fantastic team. Nevada, fantastic team. What a performance. Lucas adding on. He gets to 20 plus. 21 for Garrett Lucas. Their big three all over 20 tonight. And just a complete effort for the Wolfpack. Just, I said it before, I'll say it again. Truly dominant in this second half. There's no question. There's, there's no question. All the right decisions at the offensive end. I know Coach Alford at halftime was, this is what he's always been. If we don't guard, we can't give up 42 points in the second half like we did in the first. Or we can't win. And they got the message. He came out and just locked his team down. And it's very difficult to make Utah State struggle offensively. Ashworth gets both. Surprised to see Utah State 2 of 11 from 3 in the second half. They shoot much better at home than they do on the road. And that total is going to expand even more tonight. But Nevada controlling the second half. They go on a 19 0 run and get a 15 point home win over Utah State.